Hi all, in previous video we have taken the first approach for hypothesis space search. That is, use prior knowledge to initialize the hypothesis. In this video we will discuss remaining two approaches. The second approach is use prior knowledge to alter the objective of the hypothesis space search. In this approach, the goal criterion is modified to require that output hypothesis fits the domain theory as well as training examples. This approach uses gradient descent search. Here we discuss the first algorithm, tangent prop algorithm, which trains a neural network to fit both training values and training derivatives. Here, it uses spread knowledge to incorporate it into error criterion minimized by the gradient descent so that the network must fit a combined function of training data and domain theory. Best example for this one is handwritten character recognition. Generally, each training example consists of a pair xi, f of xi. Here, xi is some instance, f of xi is its training value. The tangent prop algorithm assumes various training derivatives of the target functions are also provided. Here, it, it takes training examples in the form of three tuple. First one is xi is instance. f of xi is its training value. Third one is training derivative or slope. By fitting these values, the learner has better chance to correctly generalize from the space training data. It gives more accurate estimate of true target function f. Here in this diagram we have three graphs. First one is our representation x and its corresponding training data. The second graph is back propagation algorithm. Here, smooth interpolation you can observe here in the case of original back propagation algorithm. It considers data in the form of two tuple only. But coming to the, this third one, where that is the graph for tangent prop algorithm. Here, it considers a three tuple training data. So, by considering this slope, it gives more accurate results than backpropagation algorithm. Backpropagation algorithm performs gradient descent to attempt to minimize the sum of squared errors. That error function is represented like this, where f of xi is true target function value and f cap of xi is a function learned from neural network. This error function is modified by adding differences between these derivatives, training derivatives and actual derivatives. The first one is a training derivative the second one is the actual derivative. Here, in these, deriv in these derivatives, it is represented as Sj of alpha comma xi. This alpha is continuous parameter. For example, alpha value is 0. That means no deviation in the character representation. So, this addition, this uh, derivative difference addition is to assert both rotational invariance and uh, translational invariance of uh, 
character identity. The mu value is a constant value. This tangent prop algorithm uses prior knowledge in the form of desired derivatives of the target function with respect to transformations of inputs. Here it measures network's error with respect to the training example values. So those are fitting with the data. And it measures its error with respect to the desired derivatives fitting the prior knowledge. The value of mu determines the degree to which network will fit one or the other of these two components in the error. The second algorithm for the second approach to alter the objective of hypothesis H is explanation based neural network learning algorithm. This algorithm builds on tangent prop algorithm in two significant ways. First, instead of relying on the user to provide training derivatives, it computes training derivatives by itself for each observed training example. Second, it addresses the issue of how to weight the relative importance of the inductive and analytical components of learning. So inductive components are nothing but a training data, training examples. This analytical components are domain theory or prior knowledge. So here the value of mu is chosen independently for each training example. In the case of tangent prop algorithm, this one value of mu is taken as some constant value and used that one in the algorithm. So here for each training example, this mu value is considered independently based on a heuristic that considers how accurately the domain theory predicts the target value for this particular example. This is the network representation for uh, explanation based neural network algorithm. By using given data and uh, given training examples and domain theory, EBNN first constructs a new and fully connected feed forward network to represent a target function. So first, all these are initialized with the normal weights which are similar to our back propagation algorithm. So here for each one, one represents one network. So in output of one network are connected as input to other network. So this one is the target network. Uh, what are the instances are provided? That is bottom is uh, flat. So this is the example for to lift a cup like that. Okay. So here uh, that one is a stable or not to keep on the table. Is it liftable or not like this? We are considered this example. So these are the instances for that example. By applying this uh, cup target, we are representing this cup target function we are taking. So this is the final representation after training derivatives. Previously, we considered one network that is developed for the target function cup by using EBNN algorithm. In that uh, diagram, in that network, we have seen many rectangular blocks. Each rectangular block represents a distinct neural network in the domain theory. So what is the domain theory we considered there? So for the target function cup, so how we are determining that one is a cup or not by considering some domain theory that is, is it stable or not? Is it liftable or not? Is it open vessel or not? 
So how we consider that one is the table? If bottom, uh, that one is table. If bottom is flat, you can keep on the table stable. You can keep on the table. How can we conclude that one is liftable or not? If it has handle, you can lift that one. If it is light one, you can lift that one. So like that, we considered domain theory. So the network that made up of domain theory can be chained together in to infer target function value for the input instances, just as Han classes might be chained together for this purpose. This algorithm uses this domain theory networks to learn new and target function, but it does not alter the domain theory network during this process. In this case, this uh, EBNN algorithm calculates partial derivatives of prediction with respect to the each instance feature. So there are many instance features are there. What is the expensive? What is the cost of that one? Is flat, bottom is flat or not? Light or not? Many uh, instances are there. So here we are applying derivatives. What is to the target function? So derivative of cup with respect to the all the instances. So which is uh, similar to our back propagation algorithm. After calculating the uh, error function to minimize that error we are changing our weight values by applying this partial derivation that error function with respect to the corresponding weight value so here in this algorithm this set of derivatives is the gradient of the domain theory prediction function with respect to the input instance. So here EBNN uses a minor variant of the tangent prop algorithm to train the target network to fit the following error function. So what is the difference in these two cases, two algorithms? Instead of sj of alpha comma x here we are using uh, a of xi what is a of xi so that is uh, domain theory uh, prediction of uh, xi what is xj so that j is a component of uh, jth component of vector x so by by using this one we are calculating domain theory predictions that one we are differentiating with respect to the jth component of vector x so this mu value changes training example to example so previously in the tangent prop algorithm mu you are using constantly throughout the process but in this case mu value changes with respect to the each instance, which each training example. So that is uh, mu i equal to 1 minus uh, uh, a of xi minus f of xi divided by c, where c is constant. The third approach is uh, using prior knowledge to augment such operators. In this approach, we will use uh, FOCL algorithm. This algorithm is an extension of purely inductive FOIL system. These two learn a set of first order Horn classes to cover the observed training examples. These two algorithms employ a sequential covering algorithm that lands a single Han class, removes the positive examples which are covered by that particular Han class, and then repeats this procedure over the remaining training examples. In both these algorithms, new Han class is created by performing 
general to specific sets. So beginning with the most general possible harm class. So that is nothing but a target function. Several candidate specializations of the current class are then generated and the specialization with the greatest information gained relative to the training examples is chosen. In the case of FOIL, it generates each candidate specialization by adding a new single literal to the class preconditions. But in the case of FOCL, it uses the same method. In addition to that, it generates additional specializations based on the domain theory. In the case of FOIL, we consider only training examples, but in the case of FOCL, we consider both training examples and uh, domain theory. So, how this uh, general to specific one is represented in the case of uh, FOCL? So, in the in the case of uh, FOIL, that is in the case of file algorithm, by considering only training data, we are developing this uh, general to specific tree. But in this case, FOCL case, we have to consider training data as well as domain theory. So here, general, most general is a cup. And we are from general to specific, we are constructing. So by using solid lines, we have taken things. So these are, by using training example, we considered. So cup has a handle or not okay this is has a handle not a handle okay what is 2 plus and 3 minus so in the given example okay in the given data uh, has handle two times that one is a positive three times it is a negative example so like that we considered and uh, by using the domain theory, we are constructing additional thing you can observe in the case of FOCL when compared with FOIL. So by using this domain theory, we are adding this particular leaf to the tree. So what is the domain theory, main domain theory? Cup is stable and cup is liftable and cup has open vessel cup is open vessel like this okay so these three are non operational one so that is these three depends on some other instances so that is when you can say one cup is stable that means if you place on the table nothing will happen to that particular cup so if its bottom is flat, you can safely place a cup on the table. And uh, next one is liftable. When you can say a particular cup is liftable, if it is light and if it has handle, you can say that uh, cup is liftable. So like this, for this open vessel also. It is has concavity and concavity points up. So these three are non-operational one, and on those instances they are depending. Those are operational instances. So in this one you observe this is the general thing. That one is replaced with the non-operational things, operational instances. So like this, you can construct re for FOCL algorithm. So if you consider a foil, there we constructed general to specific by using only training data. Here, by using training data as well as domain theory, we are constructing this one. Thank you.